Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy B back with you once again for another edition of Big Chubb Card Sharks right here at MVG Productions. Glad you could join me here once again. All right, we've got two more players here today that are going to battle it out playing some Card Sharks here with us. I've got Justin Ray and Mark Leona. What's up, guys? Hello. Hello. And I've also got Adam and Travis along watch, watching along from the audience there. So glad to have you. Hello. Glad to have you guys aboard here with us. Um, so again, thank you guys for uh, volunteering to want to play battle each other here in their little game of high low. All right, uh, Mark. Since you jumped, you chimed in first here, wanting to play. I'll give you the option. Call call the dice roll, odd or even. Odd. Say odd, and it is odd. Roll to five, so that means you're going to be playing first as the champion here, and that means uh, Justin, you're going to be the ch in the challenger spot. If I could get these names to type in correctly. <laughs> All right. Best of luck to you both. Let's jump in. Let's get some card. Let's play some card sharks. Of course, we play best two out of three. When it goes on to the money cards and a chance at a lot of bonus cash there. So, Mark, you're playing the red cards. Justin, you play the blue. And Mark, this first question goes to you, sir. We asked 100 teenage boys that are currently dating. And we asked them, would you choose your girlfriend over your best buddy? How many of those 100 teenage boys said they would choose their girlfriend over their best buddy? That's a bit of a tough spot to put them in, I'll say that. Um, I'll say about 42 of them. 42 of them, okay. 42 it is. Higher or lower, Justin? I'm going to try it and say a little bit higher. A little bit higher than that. Okay. Interesting to yeah. see. A little higher than that. An actual number of teenage boys that would choose their girlfriend over their best buddies. 93 of them. Way higher. Way more than I thought. Okay. Way more than I even thought at that point. So, All right, Justin, you can control the cards first, and we start you off with a base card of a nine. I'll change that card. Oh, you won the question, so you have the right to change it. That nine goes away in its place. We find another nine, unfortunately. So, Well, well that worked. Let's go lower. All right, going with the odds. Going lower than nine. It's a six. Freeze it. Got to freeze right there. All right. Six, nine in reverse. Yeah, keeping Mark away from his cards. And question number two goes to you, Justin. Justin, uh, this is an estimated guess question here. What's the world record for the most tennis balls held in one hand for five seconds? I'm going to say four. I'm going to say four. All right. Mark, you think the answer is higher or lower than four? I think it's a little higher than that. I tend to agree with you on that one. because I want to say it's higher, but we'll see. The, actual, the record for holding the most tennis balls in one hand for at least five seconds is 16. Wow. Okay. I've got a big hand. Now, I'd really love to see who was able to pull that off. I mean, I could probably easily do four with my hand because I've got a bit large hand too. But I don't even know how you would stack 16. It almost has to, it almost have to be in a pyramid style of some sort in order to, for that to work. But that's wild. I need to actually, I need to go find a picture of this after the show. But we'll do that then. Right now, Mark, you've got control of the cards and you've got a base card of a four. I'll keep it and I'll go higher. Higher than a four. It's a seven. Oh yeah. I'm gonna freeze that one. Yeah. All right, I'm going to freeze there. You both need three more cards to complete the round. On to our third question, Mark. This one's for you. Mark, we asked 100 people, have you ever made a long-distance call at someone's house without telling them? How many of those 100 people said they have? Uh, well, that would 
put a pretty high phone bill on the on that person, and then they would probably have to pay a lot of unnecessary charges. So, um, let's go 73. 73 people have made the long distance call at someone's house without telling them. Justin, how are with the 73? I'm going to say a little bit lower than that, to be honest. A little lower than that. We'll see. Actual number of people have made a long distance call at someone's house without telling them is 15. Mm. Not nearly as many as people. Which is good to see there. All right, Justin, you've got that six. What do you want to do? Let's get rid of that six, please. All right, changing the six. And that six now becomes a king. Much better. Lower, please. Going on lower than a king. It's a nine. Well, seems to be my favorite card tonight. Lower. Going on lower than nine. No. Oh no, it's a queen. You lose back to the king there. Mark, free chance to play off the okay. seven. Ugh, higher. Since higher. I can't change it. Higher than the seven. It's an eight up the middle. And we're going to freeze right there. All right, freezing right there. So that means you need one more question, uh, one more card in order to win the round. And this is sudden death. Someone must win on this play of the cards. Question to you, Justin. We asked 100 people in Poland. And we asked them, should workers in communist countries have the right to form a union and go on strike? How many of those hundred Polish people said they sh that workers in communist countries should have the right to form a union and be able to go on strike? I'm going to call this one right up the middle for Mark. 55, actually. 55, he says, okay. You I would. Mark for this. 55. Mark, higher or lower than 55? You would do that, Justin. Uh, higher. I'm going to say even higher than that. For the all-important control of the cards, the actual number of Polish people that say people in communist countries should be able to form a union and be able to go on strike is... 100, all of them. Wow. Wow. A rare occasion where the answer is actually 100. All right, Mark. Tough choice here. Justin's got a king. He needs three cards to win the first game of the match. You have an eight. You only need two cards. You can change yours. Justin cannot. So the option is yours, sir. You want to play it or pass? Yeah, I don't know why they freeze bars past the eight, but I'm going to change the eight anyway. Going to change it. All right. All important change here. That eight goes away. In its place, we find a nine. All right, must call two cards. Isn't that just lovely? Uh, lower. Going on lower than the nine. It's a five. Higher. For the first game of the match. Higher than a five. No. Oh, no, it's a four, and Justin wins game number one. All right. The odds of that happening to you were very, very high just then. I'm sorry it happened. All right, Justin picks up the first uh, game. Only game one. Yep, remember it takes two games to win the match. It goes on the money cards. And Mark, this one goes to you. We start off in round two. We asked 100 married young women who are children, and we asked them, have you called your mother in the middle of the night for advice if your baby was crying? How many of those 100 married young women with children said they have called their mom for advice if their baby cried in the middle of the night? 78. 78 of them have. All right. Yeah, because I can imagine a lot of those women calling on their mom for advice, particularly if they don't know what they're supposed to do in that situation. Understandable. All right. Mark says 78. Justin, higher or lower than 78? You know, this day and age, I'm going to see if it's a little bit lower than that. See if there's. Uh, new mothers out there that are trying it on their own. I'm right. going to say lower. Say a little lower. All right, let's see. 
The actual number of young married women with children who called their mother in the middle of the night because the baby was crying is 30. It is lower. Oh. Well, I'll be damned. There you go, Justin. That means you're going to start us off with a seven this time. Rough base cards in both games change that seven. All right. You want the question? You can change it. The seven goes away, and its place will Come replace on. it with a jack. Okay. That's a little bit better. But I'm going lower. All right, going on. Lower than the jack. No. Oh, no, it's another jack. All right, you'll keep the jack, and Mark, you'll play off the base card of a five. Higher, please. Higher than a five. The seven. And a three. I'm going to freeze it right there. All right. Question number two. This one's to you, Justin. We asked 100 congressmen in Washington, and we asked them, do you drive a foreign car? How many of 100... Uh, congressman said they do drive a foreign car. Personally, if I made what a congressman makes, I'd at least want a Beamer in my garage. Makes sense. So, I'm going to say 67. 67 out of 100 of them. Say they drive a foreign car. Mark, higher or lower than 67? I'm a little bit. Hmm. Well, congressmen probably make a lot of money, so I'm actually going to say a little bit higher. You say even more than that. I would think it's. I think Justin's pretty close to what I think the answer should be, but we'll see. The actual number of congressmen that said they do drive a foreign car is. 17, it's not higher, it's oh, lower. Lower than that, okay. Wow. Only one out of every five. I'm, su I'm very surprised. I guess they're all about the American-made thing. But who knows? Nonetheless, um, Justin, you've got that jack still. What do you want to do? Well, I'm going to try lower again on it. Try it again. Lower than the jack. No. Oh, no. Ace of spades will not do there. Mark, another free chance to play off the seven. I wish I could change this, but I can't, so I'm going to go higher. Well, I'm higher than the seven. It's a king. Excellent. Lower. Lower than the king. It's a seven. And three's right there. Three's right there. I only need one more card to tie up the match. And third question, this one is for you, Mark. Mark, uh, estimated, question, estimated guess on this one. How many days on average does a newborn baby robin know how to um how to fly out of its nest so we're so how many days does it take before a baby robin learns how to fly out of its nest is the question here okay i guess they mean the number of days in total like not like the days during the week right how many how many days does it take before a baby robin learns how to fly out of its nest okay um I'm going to say about 33. 30, within 33 days, all right. Justin, higher or lower than 33? Well, what little I know about birds, I do know that a mama bird generally tries to get them out of the nest as quickly as possible. So, no, I'm going to call it a lower. Let's see, I'm going to do that. All right. I genuinely am curious to see what the answer to this one because I don't know. I know they have to they have to be able to grow feathers first before they can even fly. So I'm not sure how long it takes on baby robins, but we'll see. The actual number of days it takes for a baby robin to learn how to fly out of its nest is thirteen. Thirteen days. Okay. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Two weeks and a baby robin's flying out of its nest already. That's wild. All right, Justin, you've got control. You've got, you still got that jack. All right. It ain't been working for me, so I'm going to change it and try to get something different to work with. All right, let's see what you can do. The jack goes away, and its place we will find a seven. Okay. Well... I'm going to go against the odds and go higher. Mm. 
Well, that, actually, you're with the odds at this point because you're just mm-hmm. one, yeah, below, yeah, you're yeah. one below a minute. So you say higher than the seven? Yes. All right, higher than the seven. It's a nine. Uh, freeze it. I'm going to freeze it right there. Okay. See what happens. Again, fourth and final question. Someone must win on this play of the cards. Justin, this one is for you. Justin, we asked 100 married men who've been married more than 50 years, and we asked them, was the first year of your marriage the hardest? How many of those 100 men said, yes, the first year of their 50-year marriage was the hardest? You know, I'm going to call it right up the middle, 50. Oh, see how many what? of these... I'm going to see how many of these, I don't know, we're actually owning up to it. Uh, you would uh, higher. You're going to even say higher than that. All right. For all important control of the cards, the actual number of men who have been <clears throat> married for more than 50 years said the first year of their marriage was the hardest is 40. It's just a little bit lower. Okay. Hey. All right, Justin, you've got control of the cards once again. Uh, you, If you win this game, you win the game and the match, and you're going on to the money cards. Mark gets it. He'll tie it up. He's got a seven. He only needs one card to win. You've got a nine. You've got three. But you can change yours if you decide to play. So, option, George, you want to play it or pass it? I will play this and change it. Okay, changing the nine. Good luck to you. That nine goes away, and this place we find... An eight, right up the middle. You need three cards in order to win the game of the match. If not, we're going to a tiebreaker. Stupid cards. I've not had any luck with these tonight whatsoever. Let's go lower. All right, lower than the eight. Oh, no, it's a king, and Mark ties up the match. All right, each player with one win, $100 in cash, and that means for tiebreaker, we have three cards and three questions in this round. So, control very important here as we start off this round with a question to you, Mark. Mark, we asked 100 single women, and we asked them, do you remember the names of every man that you've kissed? (laughs) How many of those 100 single women said they can't remember the name of every man that they've kissed? 50. 50 right up the middle. Justin, higher or lower than 50? You know, no offense to women, but I don't think they can honestly remember every man they've kissed, so I'm going to say lower. You'll say lower than that. We'll see. The actual number of single women who remember every, the name of every man they've kissed is actually 61. Slightly higher. Okay. All right. Mark, you've got control of the cards in our tiebreaker round. We start you off with a seven. Ugh. Justin, I know exactly what you mean by rough base cards. Change that to seven, please. Yeah, these cards these cards have not been good on this cut here, but we'll see. The seven goes away, and its place we shall find a five. A little bit better. Higher, please. Higher than a five. It's a nine. And freeze. Gonna freeze it right there, all right? Needing one more card to win the game of the match. Question two now goes to Justin. Justin, we asked 100 people, does a magazine have the right to publish an article on how to build an atomic bomb? How many of 100 people said a magazine does have the right to publish an article on how to build an atomic bomb? Very good question here. You know, the... I mean, it, there's such a thing as freedom of the press, and a, a magazine is a form of press, so I'm going to say that a lot of people feel that same way 
and I'm going to say 66. 66. Two-thirds of them say that they do. Mark, higher or lower than 66? Um, I'm going to say a little bit lower. Say lower than that. The actual number of people that believe a magazine has the right to publish an article about how to build an atomic bomb is 20. Uh, it's lower. All right, Mark, you've got control. You've got the nine. Get the nine out of here. All right, changing the nine. And it's place we find an ace. Excellent. Lower. For the game and the match, lower than the ace. It's a game, Mark, does it? Well played. Congratulations, Mark. You can play the money cards in a minute. Justin, get you 500 bucks for your win there, and our thanks for playing, buddy. We'll have you back on another game somewhere down the line. And Mark, you got your big win there. Let's go play the money cards. Here we go. All right, we're going to start you off with $400 of base money. You work your way across the bottom three cards there. Get to the second row, we'll give you an additional $700 to play with. Three more cards. And up at the top, you're going to make the big bet where you're going to make just half your money. A perfect double, double, double all the way to the top of the money card, sir, will net you $62,400. So let's see, a lot of money up for grabs here. Start you off with $400 and a base card of a nine. Change it, number two. Changing with card number two. The nine goes away in its place. Instead, we'll start with a ten. Ugh. Okay. Um, 400 lower. Bet in the house. $400 lower than the ten. Give it to me. It's a nine. You got it. <laughs> $800 and a mid card. Uh, you know what? No guts, no glory. Everything lower. Going again, oh, all of it. You're on a maniac, Mark. You're on a maniac. crazy card. You've got a set. Low, all of it, lower than the nine. It's a six. Doubled up sixteen hundred dollars. You want to do it again? Everything higher. Oh, betting it all again for sixteen hundred dollars. Higher than the six. Give it to. It's a seven. Thirty-two hundred dollars. Perfect in the bottom oh, row. We'll give you another seven hundred dollars in the middle. Thirty nine hundred dollars and a seven now, Mark. Change it with number three, please. Change it with card number three. All right. Away the three goes and it's play seven, eight, nine, an ace. Excellent. Oh, Everything lower. Betting it all. Thirty nine hundred. Come on. Lower than the ace. Can't lose. It's it. a jack. Seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Full thing lower. Again, oh. he is going for it. Oh, ballsy. All of it. Lower than the jack. It's a seven. Fifteen thousand oh, yeah. six hundred dollars and a I'll seven get, now. We'll get a wheelbarrow for his balls. We'll get a wheelbarrow for his balls. Oh, and I already used up my change for this row. Uh, you sure did. Don't be afraid, Mark. You know what? Hey, I maxed it out on Vic's game one time. I would love to do it on this. The whole thing higher. Oh, wow. boy. $31,200. Yep, $31,200 if he gets it. All of it higher than a seven. Oh, my. Oh, that's a four. So close yeah, you tried. You tried, sir. You you tried. Unfortunately, didn't work out well. But you do have at least one Joker, so you get one shot at the jackpot here. One of these cards has a dollar sign behind it. Find it. It's worth an additional ten thousand dollars to you. All right, let's go with number five. Come on, for the big money. Behind five, is it there? No. Oh, oh, it's number three. three. Well, should have looked on the Jason Street, and I can't pay the rent because you want to allow them Louisiana. All care. right. Well, another ten thousand goes to the jackpot for next time, and Champions Podium now currently sits with thirty-two thousand four hundred dollars, and that's going to do it for this game of Card Sharks. Uh, th thanks to um, Mark and Justin for playing, and thank you guys at home for watching another fun-filled episode. And if you want to see more of it, check out the full playlist here of Card Sharks on the channel. And if you want to subscribe and see other great game shows like this, past, present, or future, 
hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. That way you never miss out on all the fun and games going down here at MVG Productions. And until the cards are dealt out once again and we try to go away some more money, I'm your host, Brandon Scruggs, saying thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here for more Card Sharks. Take care. Bye for now.